Hey, it's Reed Florine, and I've got my friend Anthony Ayers on the line. Anthony, are you there? I am here. How's it going, my man? Oh, pretty good. And yourself? Very good. Thank you so, so much for having me. I'm really, really grateful for you taking the time to, you know, take time out of your day and ask me some questions. Well, I'm just glad I was able to catch you. <laughs> so, uh, so the people that uh, are listening, and maybe they don't know who you are, could you give them a little bit of your background and tell them how you got into internet marketing? Uh, sure, man. Um, I basically got into I got into internet marketing in 2003. Um, I started my um, I started a real estate company in downtown Boston, and um, at the time, I did not have the capital to invest in. Um, Newspaper advertising, and, and the, the major newspaper in downtown Boston is the Boston Globe. So, an ad in the newspaper is extremely expensive. And at the real estate firms that I had worked at prior to starting my own company, that's how most of the leads were generated. Now, 2003 was a long time ago in internet years. It was uh, nine years ago, as of the making of our our call today. And um, lots of folks just were not leveraging the internet for generating leads. And um, I didn't, like I said, I didn't have the capital to take out a $1,200 a week ad in the paper. So uh, I basically went to the, uh, I went to Barnes and Noble bookstore. It was winter of 2002. And uh, I bought this book called Search Engine Positioning. I'm actually pulling it up right now. It's, it's, this book is responsible for my career. It's kind of crazy. And it was written by a guy named Frederick Marchini. CEO and founder of a company called iProspect, and it's uh, grow your website traffic by achieving top ten search engine rankings. And this sucker is about as thick as a phone book. And uh, I, I, I bought it in, in the winter, and I basically because you know the city kind of dies in the winter; it's so cold up there. And I basically read through every page in this thing and applied what he taught in here. And it was about. Uh, it was about 90 days later, it was about maybe like April, May of 2003, I had launched, I kind of went a little overboard, <laughs> I launched a bunch of sites, and because see at the time nobody was buying domain names and stuff like they are now, a lot of people like didn't even know how to buy one, and so all these great do domain names were available for the city of Boston, like real estate keyword, exact match domains, and um, all this, all the high rises too. All their domain names were available, so I just bought them all, and I built websites for each one of them, and applied everything that he taught in this book. And it was about four. It was about four months later, three to four months later, the sites were all starting to rank on the first page, and um, it was insane. The business just like literally overnight exploded. It was like I don't even know how to explain it. It was it was crazy. It, the leads just started coming in faster than I could handle them. It sounds like you'd, you'd really dominate the market then. I did. I did. And, and, and I, it was just like I just took massive action. I didn't really think about it. It was one of those things where I had no choice. I, ha I had to do it. Um, like I couldn't think myself out of doing it. Like, you know, sometimes we think ourselves out of doing stuff because we're like, oh, that's not going to work or, you know, you know how our mindset can be. And oh, um, I, I, I had no choice. I had to do it. Um, I couldn't work at the company that I was at anymore. Um, it was just like time to move on, you know, um, and and uh, I was just in a situation where I had to make it work. And I read that book it, cover to cover and, and had never launched a website, didn't even know what hosting was, didn't know any of that stuff. And, I, you know, he didn't teach any of that in the book. I had to go get information in other places. And I used to get on the line with GoDaddy's customer support for hours. I mean, those people are incredible. But I mean, if you think about what they did back in 2003, they were a very young company back then. It was the smartest thing that they did was having live customer support because you could get on the phone with them. It would take forever. You would you would wait sometimes up to an hour to get on the phone with somebody. But when you got them on the phone, they would totally walk you through the whole process, like changing your name servers and setting up your hosting and how to FTP the files. It was, it was incredible, like the service that they provided. I, I believe that's what's made them the company that they are today. And... um you know, just just took action on it, believed it was going to work without, you know, questioning myself. It was like one of those things that has to work. And, and it did. It worked. And we went on to make just a ridiculous amount of money. And I was able to ride the real estate market uh, from 2003 all the way up until 2007. I had just amazing years. There was, you know, years where we generated over a million dollars in commissions. It was just incredible. Nice. 
And now, uh, you know, since 2007, what, what have you been doing online? So, so what happened was in 2007, the real estate market collapsed. I had sold a company in Boston in 2006, in January of 2006. It was actually at the top of the market. I did not know that. It was just dumb luck. I, was, uh, I started another company in, in, in uh, Orlando, in downtown Orlando, another real estate company. Did the exact same strategy. I bought a bunch of the subdivision domain names. Nobody had bought them. And uh, this was in 2004 when I started the second company. And um, at the time, uh, my ex-wife was a flight attendant, so it was free – uh, for me to fly up and down the coast. So we were thinking about buying a house and we didn't want to buy one up north because it was just far too expensive. And I just saw the trend of people moving down here and the pre-construction boom was happening in Florida with all the waterfront high rises. So I took advantage of that situation and I bought a bunch of high rise domain names and subdivision domain names in Florida and launched the company down here and we bought a home down here and I just got sick of flying back and forth. So I sold the company in January of 2006 um, and I sold like all the websites and everything to the person that bought it and then, um, was working the market down here, was doing great. And then in 2007, the market just collapsed and, and, uh, I had taken all the money that I had made from the other company and I invested heavily in real estate cause it was what I was doing. You know, I believed in what I was doing and, um, I bought a lot of pre-construction stuff and bought a lot of, I had a lot of, I had a large portfolio of property and and the whole thing just collapsed literally like the Ouch. house of cards yeah the house of cards came crumbling down couldn't afford to pay the, the the mortgages on the properties couldn't afford my cars and it just got ugly really quick and and um it, it was crazy because we would go to the closing table and the deals would just fall apart after the bear stearns the bear stearns was the first one to collapse it was it was like after that all of a sudden like the deals just the banks you'd go to the closing table and and the deals wouldn't get approved by the banks and and um it was just really scary man like so we had all these deals in the pipe that fell apart our cash flow dried up and it just got crazy and so what ended up happening was um uh, you know from from something bad something good always comes out right there can never be an uh, an up without a down or a right without a left or a good without a bad that's just how things are and um I was definitely going through some tough times because I'd worked so hard to build this, and it's just like in a matter of months, it all started to collapse. It was kind of crazy. But but what ended up happening was some real estate agents had called me to do these BPOs on my property, on the properties that I owned, and I had no idea what a BPO was uh, because I had been working a hot market. I wasn't really focusing on the foreclosure market or any of that stuff, and um I said, well, what's a BPO? And they explained to me that it was a broker price opinion and it's like an appraisal, but it's not a federally certified appraisal like you have an appraiser come to your house by the bank. Sure. And what the banks do is they hire real estate agents to do these BPOs because they're like 50% less than what a normal appraisal would cost. And the bank needs to know what the current value of the house is before they foreclose so that they can get ready to put the property up for sale and hire a realtor to do that. And a light bulb just went off in my head, and I'm like, "Whoa! How come I've never heard of this?" You know, and and I said to myself, "This is going to be the future because they're predicting millions of foreclosures." And I know that I'm not the only real estate agent in the country that's never heard of this, and I know that I'm not the only one that's going through this. So, I just went on the old trusty Google search bar and did a bunch of research on broker price opinion, and and saw that nobody was really teaching anything about this stuff at the time. How to become a BPO agent. And then how to become an REO agent, which is REO stands for real estate owned, which is um, it's after the bank forecloses on your house, it becomes an REO. And so they need to hire real estate agents to sell those REOs and you have to go through a process to become registered with the banks. And I discovered that I basically, you know, did a ton of research, documented everything that was going on in my life, became a BPO agent, listed REO properties for the banks, also helped do short sales, which is before the property goes into foreclosure. You negotiate with the bank to have the bank uh, sell the property for less than what it's worth before it goes into foreclosure. I didn't know about any of this stuff, so I just learned it all, and I created a course. The fr it started out as the, it was my first info product. I was I've always been excited about creating one because you know I had learned a lot of the internet marketing lead generation stuff. I was learning was all information based, so I knew that there was money to be made selling information, and I was really excited about it and. 
I just created my own little rinky dinky course. It was called the BPO kit, which taught realtors how to become a BPO agent. And um, since I had learned uh, PPC really well to generate leads for my real estate brokerage, I just basically threw up a, it was the ugliest looking sales page you've ever seen, man. It was like all these crazy colors and I didn't know how to put border like uh, highlights in, in the background of the headlines and stuff. It looked terrible, man. But I was able to get sales. I remember going under the keywords broker price opinion and BPO and the next day I woke up and I had made like 20 sales. I was selling it for $20 at the time and I was like, ooh, I'm on to something here. And um, But I still didn't know what I was doing because out of those 20 sales, a whole bunch of people had hit the page that didn't buy, but I didn't know to drive them to a squeeze page. This was j- around July of 2007 when I launched this. And um, it, it took me about, f- it was like, I didn't launch a squeeze page until September of 07. And then what I did was started driving the traffic to a squeeze page. And um, I had built a list in real estate, but I had not learned how to build a relationship with that list or communicate with that list. You know, our email communications with the list was, hey, we found a property that meets your criteria. Want to come and look at it? You know, it wasn't sure. like all the psychological triggers that we use now that we've learned, you know, that you learn in sales copy. I didn't know any of that, that stuff. So, you know, I, I, I had leads going into a squeeze page, but I didn't know how to communicate with them. And, you know, it took months of figuring that stuff out it, to, to finally get it right. And I spent thousands of dollars, you know, I bought all the courses, you know, mass control and everything that I get my hands on to learn how to communicate with, with the people on my list and how to build relationships with them. And, um, so, you know, I spent from 2007 until 2011 doing that, running that information product. It was on ClickBank. It became the number one um, ClickBank product in that category. If you go on ClickBank today and you type in REO, it comes up number one. It doesn't come up number one as the REO kit anymore. It's been changed to the BPO REO Academy. And I sold that in March of 2011 to my best student, a guy named Rob Christian. He had been my best student in the REO kit. He had been a student of mine since like uh, it was September of 2007. So right when I got the thing rolling, he had come wow. on. Board. Yeah, and he went on to he was a mechanic when he got started, and he went on to just kill it. He he went on to like learning about these houses before they went into foreclosure because he was getting the BPO orders, and then he lined up investors by taking an ad out in the newspaper and bought the properties and fixed them up and flipped them, did all this crazy stuff. And uh, I was kind of like. I, I didn't want to like take the product to the next level, like get on stage or do any of that stuff, because I was kind of like just done with the niche. You know, sure. I've been doing it for so long, and I was making money online. I had a I had a lot of affiliate sites at the time, tons of we had tons of Amazon sites, and we had some ClickBank stuff, and we were making money doing PPC stuff, because you know I was taking everything I was learning for the REO kit, and I was also doing affiliate marketing with other stuff, and I was making money doing that, and I really wanted to teach that. That was like my passion was to teach people how to make money online and I was trying to teach my group of realtors because I had gone on to build a really big list it was around 70,000 subscribers and it was it was awesome but they weren't responsive to any of my internet marketing stuff none of it and I'm like you guys are crazy because this is how I built my fortune in real estate was learning how to generate leads but they just didn't want to do it, you know, and I can understand why realtors are very busy. They have a lot going on. They have to, you know, schedule showings and negotiate offers and schedule inspections and go to closings. And the last thing they want to do is learn SEO and, you know, optimizing squeeze pages and stuff. And I get that. And it was frustrating because I was trying to sell them additional stuff. Like I didn't really have a big back end for that product for the REO kit. Sure. And, uh, so, you know, it was, it was like hard to, to get them to buy other stuff that was non real estate related. So it was very frustrating for me for four years. So I, I basically, I told Rob, I said, listen, man, I want to move on. And him and I had become close cause he lived about like 40 minutes from me in Florida. So I'd gone out to see some of the stuff he was doing and we had become close. And he said, listen, dude, I want to buy this thing from you and I want to take it to the next level. So if folks go and check it out on ClickBank, you'll still see it as number one, but you'll see a picture of Rob on there. And, and, uh, he changed the name up a bit, but it, 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 for four years, that was an amazing business. I mean, it, it brought us six figures a year in, in income, and we got into uh, promoting real estate launches um, because I wasn't, like I said, the only stuff they were interested in was real estate. So at the time, there was this big movement with all the real estate gurus. They started launching info products, high end stuff, and um, I just and they were learning from Walker and Kern and all these guys too. So they were using a lot of the product launch formula 
you know, models on, on their launches. And, you know, I got into doing launch jacking and promoting those launches. And that's how I ended up meeting uh, Derek Pierce. He was my biggest competitor. He would, Derek, we would go in and do a launch and Derek would have the whole first page. He would have like number one, number two, number three, number four, wow. number five, number six, the whole first page. And it was like, who the hell is this guy? We would spend all of our time trying to figure out what he was doing and we could never crack the code. And, um, I ended up competing with him. The, way, the reason I was able to compete with him was because I had a bit a bigger list. He didn't believe in building a list at the time. He only wanted to do SEO. He didn't want to build a list. And um, uh, the only way I was ever able to compete with him was SEO was I started doing these video interviews with the product creators, and the videos started to shoot up to the first page of Google. And then I was able to rank for the product name, product name review, and product name bonus with my videos. And that was the only way I was able to compete with Derek. And uh, we, we, we weren't really friends at the beginning because we were competitors, but then we kind of got to know each other a couple of years later. Uh, I put together this mastermind with a couple of the, the top promoters, and um, but we were all like wary of each other because we knew we were all each other's competitors. Sure. But uh, when I sold the REO kit in 2011 and moved over to the Warrior Forum permanently, we became closer and we we had like started to kind of build a relationship it was like september 2010 we had started to mastermind together and we slowly started to trust each other and then when i made the announcement that i wasn't going to be promoting any more real estate launches that i was moving on to something else it's like our relationship like totally became like uh it, it was you know the inhibitions went away and we started to totally trust each other and then we became really close and I had launched my first WSO in May of 2011, and we had done really well. I think we sold like 600 units in 48 hours, which now is not a big deal. But back then, to back me, that, then, was, that was a lot. <laughs> yeah, it was a big deal to me back then because I'd never sold that many units of something that fast. Like when we would sell the REO kit, it would be like 150 units, but it would take us all month to do it, you know, because it sure. was a $97 product. So. It was like we sold 600 units of something in 48 hours. I was like, oh, my God, there's something here. And I was just like blown away by it. And then I told Derek about it. And then I talked him into doing one. A month later, he did one. And and um, and then since then, we've just become like even closer. And, you know, we've launched a bunch of stuff together. That's kind of the history of the whole thing. And, and uh, that that's brought us to, to launch Lead Rocket uh, we've, we, we, you know, that was the last one that we did together, which was our biggest one ever. We moved 4,474 units on the front wow. end. <laughs> yeah. On the front end in the forum. And I, I gotta be honest with you, Reed, I did not think it was going to do that well. I thought we were, we were only shooting for about a thousand to 1500 units on it. So we were blown away by what we did. That, that's gotta be one of the best ones out there. For uh, yeah. I mean, it's one of the top. I, I think if you break 4,000 on the front end, it's a big deal. I, I didn't realize how much of a big deal it was. Only a few people, I guess, have done that many units on the front end. Um, so I was like, bro, i got to be honest. I did not think. Like, I told Derek, I was like, man, I don't know how well this is going to do. Because uh, there had been a similar plug-in that had launched uh, about a month before ours. And uh, it kind of sucks because like ours had been in development at the time, like we had been working on ours for a while. And sometimes that sucks, you know, when you're in product development and you're working on something and then someone comes out to market before you do, yep. it's kind of, it's kind of a bummer. Um, but you know, we let him launch his and there was nothing we could do about it after it launched. We kind of just let, let a month go by. And then we said, all right, well, ours is ready now. Let's put ours out there. And we didn't think ours was going to do that well because his had already, you know, come out before ours. But it just blew up, man. I don't. I don't even know. It just took off. It was crazy. Well, it's crazy. So it was exciting. Let's tell everyone a little bit about what Lead Rocket is and why it's a better way to build your list. Sure. Um, so uh, Lead Rocket is a WordPress plugin that installs in a few minutes. Super easy to use, and uh, literally within three to four minutes, you could launch a beautiful looking squeeze page. Uh, and for those that don't, that don't know what a squeeze page, it's a website that has really only one type of action on it, which is for folks to leave their name and email address, um, which is probably the most important kind of website that you can have in your business um, because you're, you'll be able to build a list with it. And once you have a list, 
it, you can create sustainability and predictability in your business. Um, and it's something I never realized. Like I said, like w- with with REO Kit, you know, I didn't start building my list until about three to four months after I launched the product. And we were doing okay, you know, after our PPC cost, we were making a couple hundred bucks a day. So I was like really happy. I didn't think I could make more money with it until I discovered the whole, you know, put the people in the A Weber, build a list, build a relationship with them, you know, have like a special every month. And I started doing that with the REO kit and literally our business quadrupled. It was insane. Like it was like, I, I was like, oh my God, I cannot believe I have not been doing this sooner. So that's when I first experienced the power of a list, of having a list and and, and building a relationship with my list. So, uh, you know, that's what Lead Rocket does. The, the, the challenge is so many people have a hard time getting a website up or a squeeze page up. And when they do, it's not what they expect or it doesn't work how they expected it to work. And so with uh, with Lead Rocket, we got the idea from Lead Rocket by um, – we were promoting a launch uh, for Evan Pagan called the, the, the Guru Blueprint. And uh, Derek was promoting that launch and he saw how uh, Evan was doing his squeeze pages and uh, – and then, you know, Ryan Dice had kind of done the same thing. And then Andy Jenkins had done the same thing. And uh, we were like, man, we should launch a plugin for this just to create pages that look like these. And that's where we got the idea for it. And so, um, you know, w- when Derek created the plugin, it was just amazing because when we launched it, people were just like, I've created my first squeeze page in under five minutes. I cannot believe this. I've been trying to create a squeeze page forever. And this is so easy. So it was like really exciting for us for to just have people like, you know, emailing us and telling us we've created our first squeeze page, which is really exciting. You know, when you launch it, I remember when I launched my first website, you know, it was, it looked terrible, but I was so excited that I finally got something up there, you know, on the internet and I understood what was going on. Um, so that's what Lead Rocket is. It's a really easy way to create the a beautiful kind of squeeze page. And, and it's the I don't know for folks that don't know it, it's kinda you may or may not have seen them, but it's the squeeze pages that have the beautiful backgrounds, like the very scenic backgrounds, and there's a big opt-in box in the middle. And it's very obvious that the call to action is to leave your name and email. Um and, and you know, ideally you can put any kind of image you want in the background that's represents what it is or what your offer is. Well, it's a fantastic product. I bought it when you guys launched it as the WSO, and uh, I went from downloading it to installing it to making my first squeeze page with the software in five minutes. And nice. It's so easy. Nice. And you can switch the backgrounds out. I don't know if you had a chance to do that. You can go crazy with it. Yeah, I think you guys had like 10 or 20 backgrounds that were included. It was pretty cool yep. uh, how quick yep. you could just change stuff with a click of your mouse. Yep, it's yep. It's an awesome product. So Thank you. So where does someone get a copy of Lead Rocket? Uh, all you got to do is go to wpleadrocket.com forward slash RF. Awesome. Well, thanks, Anthony. I really appreciate you do- taking the time to do this call. I, I know my listeners are going to appreciate hearing your story. It was very interesting to-, to hear of all the things that you've done online and how you've experienced you know, s- struggles and you've-, you've overcome and been bigger and better just because of having – the uh, mindset to just keep trying and keep going, and now you've created a wonderful tool that's going to help a lot of people build their business. Thank you, man. And, and I would love to add something about the mindset stuff because I'm 38 years old. I've been on God's green earth long enough to have a little bit of experience under my belt to know that all of the challenges that you face in your life today and have faced, they get you ready for the big show. Um, there's no way that you can take on more responsibility in your life and in your business if you're not ready for the challenges that come with that and all the things that you face, they just get you ready for it. And, um, you know, knowing that when you get up every morning will definitely help you overcome the challenges that you face, you know, and take a little bit of time when you're taking a shower in the morning, you know, it's a great time to say affirmations to yourself. It's a good time to have a positive mindset and say things to yourself. Like I am young, I'm vibrant, I'm full of vitality. I am a money magnet. I uh, uh, I am a millionaire whose money has not yet been deposited in my bank account. Uh, the more money magnets I create, the bigger of a money magnet I become. Uh, if you say things like that to yourself every day, amazing things will happen to you. And, and it's also really, really important to be grateful for what you have. We as humans are always worried about what we don't have and comparing ourselves to other people that have more. And what you really need to do is start – 
uh, having gratitude for what we have, like say things like these. Are, I say things like this to myself every day, and when I'm having a bad day, because you know I have challenges too, and I have bad days too. I start focusing on what I have. Like I, I say, I'm grateful for the beautiful house that I have. I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for my dogs. I'm grateful for the money that I have in the bank. I'm grateful for the car that I drive. I'm grateful for the food that I have in the refrigerator. Uh, once you start saying stuff like that, you get into an immediate positive mindset. And then having an immediate positive mindset will attract positive things into your life because you put out higher frequencies, you put out a better vibe, and people want to be around positive people and they want to do business with positive people. So uh, these are little things and little tweaks that can help you overcome the challenges that you are going to face every day on your journey to success. That is some awesome life-changing advice and I'm really glad that you brought that up in the call. No problem, man. My pleasure.